Hi everyone, Chris Day here, and here we are again in Connected Hearts. So, uh, let's continue, shall we? Because this game always uh, leaves us like on the edge of our seats. I mean, it's always super, super interesting, and I don't know. I just really like this game. It's so. How can I say it? So mysterious and it's always like super interesting. So uh, let's see, let's see. What do we have over here? Oh yeah. <coughs> I have to use my, my mask voice between quotations. Without second thought. Without second thoughts, I pick up the key and walk to the door at the end of the hallway. As I imagine. The key fits perfectly. I hear the safe on the lock and then open the door slowly. In the other side, there are stairs that go down to another hallway. Oh. It's flooded, and to make it worse, the lights are up making it impossible to see how young it is. I doubt for a moment, thinking it was horrible it was a horrible idea to cross it. The uncomfortable sensation of getting wet alone was enough to make me doubt, but after reading the diary I think more seriously about it, until I finally say no winter were no other options. If I don't move, I will never get anywhere, at least that's for sure. I take a deep breath, gathering courage before going down the stairs as slowly. When my feet touch the water, I, I exclaim surprise. Uh, say it is good, say it is good would be a mistake. This is the frozen hell. I can't explain how it hasn't turned into ice. I tremble doubting if I should continue going. I have to use every f uh, fiber, I think it's fiber. I have to use every fiber of my being to get the will to continue. Until the water reaches literally past my waist. I exclaim that God, hugging myself to keep some heat. It takes me a few seconds to get used to it. Thankfully, my first impression was exaggerated, or as I will say, of hypothermia before getting to grasp it. But I think it's one thing it's I know for sure. If I manage to escape from here, I will never shower with cold water again. Oh, I like this effect. I hear how I push the water when I start moving. Before me, there is a young and dark hallway that extends beyond my sight. If I weren't, if it weren't because some of the lights are still working, it would be in perfect darkness. As I walk along the hallway, I realize there are more doors at my left and right. However, I don't, I don't bother trying to open them. They are all ruined, warped, warped as if something had brutally smashed them with a hammer. I stop for a second to think what could have happened. My best guess is that one of the crew members went insane. Is not something very cheering. I say it and then shake my head to clear my mind. Giving no more talks. Giving no more talks to it, I continue moving across the hallway. Because of the water, I move so slowly it seems it will take me a full day to reach the end. That is, if I ever see the end. 
Occasionally, I find the eggs on the way. It seems the upper flat is flooded too. With so much water for a moment, I doubt the ship is still floating. I continue my way across the young hallway, truly grateful for the fuelliums that are still working. Some of them flicker, leaving me in the dark for an instant. But even a little of light, it's comforting. I haven't said a single word since I got in the water, until this very moment. Uh huh? I exclaim confused when I notice something different in the Kyosa star. It is ruined like all the others, but what is new is that it was some marks, deep cuts. I move closer to examine them carefully. It is at that moment that I realize those cuts were made by claws. My face turns pale with surprise, at the same time my heart skips a bit, frozen by a sudden cold. I instantly remember what I have read in the diary. Creatures from the deeps? I murmured quietly, imagining many, many things. Things. Not even one of them are good. I swallow saliva, feeling my hands shake. Not from the cold this time. I should hurry up and get out of here. I don't feel safe in the hallway anymore. Ooh, Grar. I am guessing that's like a groan, but it seems like it's saying. Gary? Are we trying to say Gary? I just thought that when suddenly I hear something roar in the dark. The echo in the hallway makes it impossible to know where the noise came from. It is, however, easy to realize. It's like nothing I have heard before. I look back. At that very moment, all the eggs, except for the one right about me, Go dark. Truly, my yak, it's incredible. I swallow saliva, filling my heart in my throat. The anxiety crushes my chest so badly it is hard to breathe. Then I hear something hitting the water. I turn around, finding nothing. Unfortunately, I don't know where it comes from. As if I was crazy, I look everywhere, knowing something stalks me, but not what on, but not what or from where. Feeling helpless is a horrible thing. I hate it. I can't even bear it. Nervous, I take a step back and then feel there is something hard under my foot. I look down, but with so little eye, it's impossible to see what it is. The only thing I can do is submerge and find out. The object is still... The object, the object remains still, so I doubt it's a living creature. No, oh, kayak, kayak, kayak? What? Can that be? The creature makes another no another sound. A strange one that I can't describe, but makes my heart beat frightened. It seems to be looking for the ideal moment to attack. Then I hear something perturb the water at my back. Instantly, I turn around. What I found freezes my blood. I have to hold my desire to scream. Oh, what in the world is that? Oh my goodness, what is that? It seems like a man 
with oil black skin, or right there, the mixture of a man and a fish with the scales and grills and gills. Oh my goodness, that's so weird. Also, the youngest, sharpest claws I have ever seen. My very soul is covered in knives. I am completely paralyzed. Even my heart stops as my eyes behold that image. Oh my goodness! Again, the creature makes that sound. Only this time, I can see how it does it. It's rubbing its claws. Slowly, it gets closer to me. It doesn't seem to have eyes anywhere, so maybe it hasn't seen me. But I know, but it knows I am close, that's for sure. Little by little, the distance between the two reduces, closer and closer. Confront it or escape? Oh, decision time! So let me save if I may. Over. Um, oh, we already have a lot of save friends. So let me save here. Let's come back. And should we be scared of this thing? I mean, if we escape, we are not gonna have another way around here. Because we will have to return at some point. So let's confront it. Let's see what we can do. I swallow saliva at the same time, close. My hands in fist, looking for my inner strength. Fighting against a monster sounds like the worst idea I could have. But escaping is no better. The way back is dark. I could easily be ambushed, and even if I do manage to go back, I am afraid I will never try again. Maybe there is something I can do to scare it away. And it makes that kind of clanky noise with, with their uh, nails, or well, glass. I was just thinking about it when I hear that sound again. However, I can't tell you where it is. I tremble with a chill at that instant. Then remember a small but hard object. By a reflex, I crouch down, submerging myself to pick it up. When my face dips out of the water, I open my eyes in surprise. I I must scream, but manage to hold it. My heart jumps, seizing, seeing the monster at just a few meters away from me. It has no eyes, so it can't see me, but I can see it. Oh my goodness! It groans, making an echo across the hallway as it moves. It's head everywhere looking for me. I don't even think my hands move along grabbing right the object before throwing it with all my strength. In the air, my eyes look at it for a split second. It was a piece of metal from a broken pipe. Oh, that, that must have hurt. The monster squeals when the broken pipe hits it right in the head. Then it dives into the water and goes away swimming swiftly, breaking one of the doors to escape. At first, I was paralyzed from the shock, but then I take a deep breath and say, feeling relief. It doesn't seem like it's coming back anytime soon. If it was up to me, I would prefer never seeing it again. Then, for no reason, 
Te hay que sin dejar igual y hay que tita. Y hay que apagar. Ay, bien. Thinking if it could have any radiation with the monster's escape. Anyway, there is nothing else to do than keep moving. So, I do just that. Until I finally see a set of stairs at the end. My eyes shine for a second, overflowing with joy. I was closer to the end than it looked like. It's just that the darkness made it hard to see. Oh, so we were close all the time? Wasting no time, I go up the stairs. Thankfully, thankful of finally going out of the curse of cold water. Is it raining? I murmured once I got to the upper level. I looked through one of the windows, seeing the raindrops hit the glass. Water leaks from the roof, creating puddles all around the place. Seems I have solved the mystery of the yaking. Looking around, I noticed there is a sign that reads, Bridge. If there is any clue on how to escape from here, or at least on what happened with the crew, it must be in that place. I don't doubt to follow the signal, finding others along the way. The ship is enormous, but seems I am closer to my destination. I hear my footsteps in the water as I walk, passing by countless abandoned cabins and broken doors. The ship is like a maze. For a moment, I question, I question why would they need so many cabins. But I guess that before being abandoned, they had a use from them. I stop for an instant when I see the mark of chaos on in one door. I feel a shiver so cold that freezes my soul at that moment. However, the marks don't seem recent, and I can hear the monster roaming around, so I guess there is no danger for now. That's the keyword for now. I keep on walking for unknown seconds. Curiously, no matter how long I walk, I don't feel tired. At no time, I think about taking a rest. Except when I stop to think, it's been a long time without doing it. In any case, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I just don't have to waste time in that. This is the place. I said to myself, once I am standing right in front of the bridge door. I take a deep breath, doubting for an instant before opening it. Or should I say, trying to open it. My hand moves, but the door remains immovable. What's wrong? My voice is full of frustration when I say that word. Those words. The door is locked and won't open anytime soon. I close my eyes and sign feeling all of my energy leave my body with my breath. It's just too unfair. I could try to knock it down, but it seems so sturdy. It would be a waste of effort. I feel at the edge of despair. Tanga drop intensifies. Looking down to the ground, unable to raise my hand. And then I realized there are pairs of paper at my feet. With curiosity, I blinked before picking them up. Captain Rogers locked himself in the bridge. What a coward. He thinks he has the only key, but I hide a copy in the body room. 
If Ken managed to acquire it, I'll be able to open the door and escape from this damned ship. The rest of the page is blank. Judging by the type of writing, it seems was uh, it was written by the same seller who wrote the diary. Along with the message, there was a map of the ship. Someone worn off, like if it was very old, but it's easy to read. Actually, this is very okay, maybe too much. Anyway, I can't complain when something actually goes well for me. Now I have a direction, and thankfully, the value room doesn't seem to be fair. It's just that I will have to go back to that cursed flooded hallway. I say. Not feeling like going back there, but there is no other way. Then, I start moving back, finding nothing worth telling along the way, until I walk down the stairs dipping in the cold water. I make a disgust face, holding my desire to squeak from the cold. I thought it would be easier the second time, but I was wrong. Wasting no more time, I start walking, moving the water as I advance with each step. The eggs are still not working properly, just like before. But I guess that's better than not working at all. When I arrive at the door of the boiler room, I suddenly stop getting an unpleasant surprise. I rub my forehead, full of frustration. In a terrible turn of events, I realize the door of the boiler room is exactly the same door the monster knocked down to escape. I guess I should be at least thankful to it for opening it. It saved me the effort of looking for a key. But I really can't give my thanks to that thing. My heart hardness with anxiety as I doubt about what should I do. The best would be for me to do this quickly and get out. I take a deep breath, and with that in mind, I start moving. Careful not to make any noise in case the monster is nearby. <laughs> I am so sorry. I doubt another broken pipe would save me if I see it again. The way the body room is relatively short. Oh, the way to the body room is relatively short. Much more than the young hallway, but not any better item. Before I knew it, I am standing in a huge room of the ship with many furnaces and pipes that naturally stopped working with the flood. Whoever what calls my attention, however, what calls my attention is not that, but another very important detail that I haven't talked before. This is the volume room, but how many ships nowadays use this type of engine? Sure you know, it's like if I had traveled back to the past. I scratch my head, trying to understand the complex machinery. But after a few seconds, I simply gave, give up. It is clear that it is impossible for me. Anyway, thankfully, I don't have to fix it. I just need to take the key and get out of here. Then. I start to walk around. It sounds much easier than that it gets done. There is one very important detail missing. Where exactly is the key? The room is huge, and looking for it could take me not hours, but even days. And with the monster lurking around, that's too much time. Once again, I feel how my spirit crumbles, like a sandcastle washed away by a huge wave. 
helplessness, I have felt that before many times. And even then, I could never get used to it. I shake my head, just complaining won't take me anywhere. I have to start looking. Maybe I be lucky and... Or it is in an visible place. I don't know. Honestly, I doubt it, but go doing nothing will surely not help me. I forced myself to start exploring the room as sighting where could someone had hide the key. It must be in a place where nobody looks, or else that will ruin the purpose of a healing of hiding it. It also must be in a place that won't harm the key, so that rules out the furnace, thank God. Even if they don't work anymore, I feel terror to think I could get trapped on them and the water would start to boil. After unknown minutes, I saved this scratch. I wasn't... it... Uh, excuse me? Uh, what? I mean, uh, I don't think that's what they mean, I, I am guessing he's feeling paralyzed or uncomfortable or petrified, but <coughs> I mean, there were another ways to, to say it, not gonna lie. My goodness, that could be taken out of context so badly. I wasn't as scared as I imagined. Just like at least three times that. <laughs> oh, no. Pretty please, no. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> Krista, you are so mean. You are so, so, so dummy. Now I get it. But wait. It was a mistake because it said I, right? I didn't wrote weirdly, or do I? Options? Can I say no? I can see. Uh -huh. I, I am gonna see that on the on the recording because I, now I am curious. Not gonna lie. If it was just me or a really interesting error between quotations and the translation. Anyways. Let's continue. Sorry about that. <coughs> the idea that it is impossible repeats itself inside my mind, like a broken record, but I ignore it as much as I can and continue searching. Oh, the monster again! And then suddenly my heart stops. My blood freezes at that sound. Knowing very well what it meant. I held my breath while looking everywhere finding nothing in sight. Seems like the monster is not in the room, but it is surely nearby. nearby. The sound of its chaos makes an echo across the whole room, building up an unbearable anxiety inside me. More kayawi sounds? <laughs> sounds? Oh my goodness, I, I don't know. I am just too shitty. I am so sorry. Again, I hear it. This time is stronger. I swallow saliva, feeling my heart beat in my throat. I have to do something and do it now. Ooh, more options. I have more options. Save, and let's see. Go to a place outside the water or hide. I mean... Where could we possibly hide ourselves? I guess that perhaps could be a little bit more useful, like... Uh, you know, going to an upper place? Like trying to climb something instead of trying to hide ourselves? 
So you had to do it. I don't know why, but it feels like a good idea. Usually people don't tend to your cat, and in this case I am dealing with an alias monster. The sound makes me accept I don't have time, so without a sec without second thoughts, I start climbing up one of the pipes in the furnace, going up as much as I can. It reminds me of when I climbed trees as a kid, except this time I'm doing it to save my life, and not for fun. Once I get to the top, I hold with all my strength to their pipes. To the pipes, while looking at the entrance waiting for the monster to appear. My heart races, but my mind is confident. I am scared, but it doesn't sound reasonable to think it could find me here. Chen Chen. The monster rose with inhuman voice when it crosses the door. I hear the water being disturbed as it explores the room impatient. Seems it's looking for me. It knows I am close, but doesn't know where. I see it surge in every corner as it rubs its chaos anxiously. The sound is burned into my memory. However, seeing how impatient it is, tastes sweet in my mouth. For a moment, I even thought on making fun of it, but of course don't do it. I mean, don't, don't do that. Don't make fun of anyone when you are winning, just take it and, and shut up. Pretty please, I mean, I have seen way too many people using me because of, of, you know, trying to show up. And honestly, I don't think you want to use in this situation. I wouldn't be prudent to make even the associated sound. Then the monster smashes the water, splashing all around, and later it buries its chaos many times in one of the furnaces, making eye out metallic squeak each time. It is truly unbearable. I cover one of my ears with one hand while using the other to hold to the pipes. But thankfully, it doesn't last long. Soon later, I see how the monster gets frustrated and dives into the water, quickly swimming away. In just a couple of seconds, the danger disappears. However, I wait a little longer to make sure it won't come back. When my heart finally releases, I know. Finally reacts, I know. It is time to go down and continue exploring. However, just when I was thinking that I see something. However, oh my goodness, I, I need commas over here. However, just when I was thinking that, I see something that stops me. And this is our sign, guys, you know. It's gonna say. And, ooh. No, no, no. I want to use a new save file. <coughs> Thank you. So, guys, this will be all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like, to subscribe, and to leave a nice comment if you feel like it, of course. I really like this visual novel. I mean, it seems to be pretty young so I like it I like it we are gonna have this series for a young time it seems like and I am actually really glad of that I don't know I just feel like we haven't had a really young series besides the bad I got in the channel so maybe this one could be a really good one to to start a YouTube with that but in any case thank you so much and I will see you in the next video or the next stream Bye bye my cute cats, may the stars light 
Me with you? I really like it, not gonna lie. But throwing my mask voice really makes my throat so... So... I don't know. I need water. Lots of water. 